But as the match approached, questions over the state of the newly relayed wicket began to be voiced even louder. Its appearance certainly didn't inspire confidence, with ripples visible to the naked eye and rivulets of lush grass punctuating an otherwise shiny surface. But no one, surely, could have imagined what was to follow. Believing that the wicket would only get worse, Mike Atherton chose to bat on winning the toss, but in the very first over, the pitch was already parading its devilry. As Atherton and Stewart struggled to find a method of coping with the dramatically inconsistent bounce, Walsh and Ambrose homed in on their target. Well, uh, Stewart's uh, rubbing his shoulder. Walsh soon prompting Atherton to stab the ball to gully. And taken in the gully. Showing Campbell the field, Atherton goes. In at number three came Mark Butcher for his first knock of the tour. Called up that morning because Jack Russell fell ill overnight, only to receive an unplayable delivery first ball. He goes first ball, Steve Buckner gives him out. Virtually impossible to play. Nasser Hussain showed courage in seeking to stop the rot, but eventually Ambrose produced one of the few deliveries that didn't misbehave, and Hooper took a good catch at slip. Nine for three, and you might expect the West Indies to be cock a hoop but it was clear from their body language they were just as concerned about the wicket as England. By now, the England physiotherapist Wayne Morton was almost a permanent fixture on the field, and everyone, players, umpires and the match referee Barry Jarman, were beginning to think the unthinkable. Well played. That is very, very well played. That's caused him great pain. He's in trouble here, Stuart. Well, I just think that you've got to use a bit of common sense here. This is meant to be a sour, an even contest. Test cricket. The clincher was a ball from Ambrose to Stewart. Stewart played forward, but the ball went clean over wicketkeeper David Williams' head for four byes. Signaled over the wicketkeeper's head from a ball so pitched up that Alex Stewart was playing forward to it. I'm sorry, but this is uh, a complete joke. Well, a little bit of conversation there between the two batsmen. I think even Kirtley Ambrose is starting to wonder what he's going to do on a wicket like this. And that one goes. Uh, about shin height. Complete nightmare. Yes! Played a game and uh, more pain. Two more blows on the hand to Stewart and Thorpe, and Stewart pulled Atherton onto the field. And incredibly, that conversation with umpires Buckner and Venkat, Lara and Jarman, was to prompt the first ever abandoned test match due to the pitch in 122 years. The crowd was shocked into almost total silence, hardly believing the evidence of their own eyes, and the realisation slowly dawning that what so many had saved up to cross the world to witness was to end up like this. But after consultations with the ICC in London, there was a hastily called press conference, at which it was confirmed that this was indeed the case. As the local press savaged those responsible, both sides had to try to cope with a massive sense of anti-climax and the logistical difficulties of moving early to Trinidad for a hastily rearranged match. For all the wrong reasons, Supina Park will remain etched in cricketing history, and the cost to cricket in Jamaica, both in financial and cricketing terms, will be evident for a long time to come.